inside the Oriana. This All right, is game two. Here we go, guys. Uh, I absolutely love the draft again. This is another thing that we mentioned in the pregame. This plays towards the anti Chovy strategy, and now we have something really awkward here. First off, Cassidy saying, I need to take this for myself. Oriana, this is what we want quad on Ori. We want to play front to back, quad on Ori, be able to shield these two guys in the front of the fight. We have this really awkward dynamic for this team. They have no power to play off the Nidalee. Nidalee usually requires a mid laner with Pryo so that you can go and invade and do all the things you want to do. Or you want two champions that have a lot of threat that can set up a spear for you so that you can go in and deal that maximum amount of damage. Right now, it seems like they're going to use Canyon to be the source of scaling for them that they're going to say, hey, we're going to springboard off of the power of the Nidalee to get in your face. But this Nunu means, okay, what are you gonna, like, I'm not gonna fight you at my Raptors. I'm just going to skip Raptors and gank mid again. I expect this Nunu to make seven trips to mid lane, twice back to back on the first clear, and then again before finishing the second clear. And the whole purpose is going to be to get Chovy off his game. Is Canyon going to feel like he has to stay and, and babysit mid? And if that happens, is that going to change the dynamic? This is a series, right? We have to win three games, not just one. We need to win three times. And this isn't just about showing out against Korea and saying, hey, look, we competed against a Korean team. Make no mistake, Papa Smithy has put together a team that expects to compete to win worlds. It's not just about one game at a time. So after that big hype of game one, loved inspired demeanor. I loved Bwipo's demeanor. Okay, we did it. This is, we did what we wanted. There's some things I want to do better. Go talk to my team, come back out, let's see what we get. What we get is Nunu passing through mid. Ezreal is going to be left alone for much of the game. This is going to be a danger, right? This is super flexible for setup. We're going to play super aggressive here. This is going to be the scaling. And then Jax is going to be that joker that can do everything for you. A lot of CC, but this Kassadin feels really, really weird. Now, they may say, hey... You can't. What are you going to do to threaten us? If your threat is Ezreal, Kassadin is going to outscale the Ezreal. If you're if you're trying to pass through with Nunu, all I need to do is survive. Get the XP, and I can outscale the Oriana. With that being said, if we get a fight where Rakan is able to come in, hammer to anvil, front to back with Nunu Rakan. This is a pivot point for the Rakan to springboard, and Renekton showing that Bwipo knows that he's going for these flank angles, then that gives the perfect situation for an Oriana ball. You just have to make sure that Cassidy is not going to turn around and murder the, the Oriana on the backside of that. Alright, Nunu being contested for this. And we have Lehens taking his turn going for this. Inspired says, alright, I'll just take the big wolf and I'll move away. You're already going to get the reset. Canyon's going to get two camps here. Not getting three means he's not going to have a fast four. He's going to go for half, uh, five camps on this side and then flex from there. He may decide to come over and then defend. We do have a red ward spotted here. Nunu might just go straight over this way. Uh, you might also go, if you know that this ward is coming, you actually have a path that goes around like this, or that goes straight into a gank on top, if you're expecting a play. Love what the Nunu's doing right here. Wolf to Raptor to Krug, saying I'm going to take red last, af potentially after I gank, see how much we can get from it. Canyon is rocking his world skin, as we expect him to do. He's saying, hey, I got you guys, I'll, I'll put you on my back. Oh, are they going to overplay? Whippo trying to get a little bit of a first chunk here. Now, Jax Renekton, one of the things I don't like about this Renekton pick is that they sort of self counter pick themselves. Late game, what like what situation are you are you hoping to get? Uh, this is what we talked about with Nunu. They had this ward down. They know that, oh, potentially Nidalee. I don't know if she threw a spear or not. If she threw a spear, then bot lane can call out, hey, you're free to invade. And if that's the case, then Nunu gets everything. You might, as Canyon, Bait the Nunu into spending more time taking your camps and say, that's fine. You can take time as long as you're not ganking mid, that's fine with me. The blue buff early in the game just does not matter the way it used to. Now that you have infinite mana in the jungle, stealing blue buff is inconsequential compared to stealing the second spawn of raptors, frogs, wolves, and, and gromp. All right, 2v2, Renekton... Renekton Rakan should be strong for the initial part of that fight, but you just cannot fight against an Ash. I don't like how much they were willing to take back on that side. It may just be a play to try to keep them here. Oriana is outpoking, outpoking Kassadin. Has brought 
biscuits as well to say i want to stay topped off i want to stay in this lane as long as possible you see that quad is hovering left side showing that Nunu is Nunu is uh, on that side of the map we're happy to play strong hold on we see the first guy rakan taking the reagro going back flashes back to block the damage pace does the maximum gets out they're actually walking him out this way because it's safe well done well done. Busio burned flash. I don't know what he what he tried to block or if it was just a projectile. Or if he was just trying to get on top of him. Chovy forced to flash in the 1v1. Uh now he has a doomed a doomed lane here. He's gonna have to teleport. It is a cannon. Uh Quad has enough mana to push the rest of the wave in. He's going to sit here. As long as the cannon's under turret, it will come back. But he's probably gonna go for more, realizing that Chovy's here. And especially with that Q cooldown, Quad has enough mana to, to hard shove this now. <sighs> lot to talk about Ezreal is going to be left alone for as long as possible you try to stay away from the ash you don't take any fights you just dash away from from any amount of slows if Busio can stop this no flash oh my goodness they might get this this is a no flash cast in he may not even have enough mana for for Q no he goes he casts it in response Busio saying all right I'm gonna take half of this he walks back into turret range Canyon's there for the regain and Nunu's not in position so it was a bait well done by Genji well done by Canyon and Chovy, knowing that he has the ability to get that Q off, it's a lot of magic damage. Not enough to get them out of this situation, and they just don't have enough threat. And now Ash is going to make Renekton's life complete hell here, spacing him out perfectly. This is a Doran shield, and he does have refillable, so he's holding on to a lot of this health. It's not actually going to matter. A back is a back. So really, you've just made Pays reset some of his own timer here. He missed a little bit of that of that uh, CS and experience by diving as far as he did. We'll see if there's a play for them here. We'll expect Nunu to come hover. Rakan can try to cover. I don't like that Rakan's showing himself. Unless it's, yeah. I mean, you know that you have to take this wave, but I don't want you to tell the other team that you're going to be here. Uh, but here is this one more time. There was no ignite on Busio, and Quad is pretty low on mana. Hasn't actually faced. So, just oh, a problem there with the second dash and the fact that you, get, you have to, you obviously have to dodge that. Maybe he got locked out on the E2 animation. And he's feeling it a little bit, but he's there for that. It's going to be a tough game to pull out from here. Acid in getting access to that assist. You get the extra experience. Plus, Kanan's going to be springboarded. Have not seen any visits from Nunu to mid lane. Uh, largely based on the position that they've been in, but I want Nunu to go with Rakan. I like that Rakan went and say, hey, let's stop the back, but it should have just been a Q to the face and walk back. That's it. If Kassadin casts his Q, you stop his back. You don't deal him any damage, but you stop his back. If he doesn't cast his Q, you stop his back. That should have been the objective there. Uh, again, everything is about negative net. Whatever can cause the, the most negative net gold to Chovy is your best chance at winning these games. It doesn't need to be a full-on dive. It does not need to be the, the one in five play. Just what is the consistent play here? All right, Ash bullying Renekton. This is something that we've seen in these lane swaps. Um, the Renekton pick, we I really hate. It was, uh, it was R5, too. It was the last pick of the draft. They opted into this. Has no play in this matchup. Has no play in this matchup. And you can't stick to Kassadin or to Nidalee. So... I don't know what we're hoping for from Renekton, uh, but it's probably going to be something like Stonewall forward, use that as a pivot. We're going to look for our synergy, and this is going to come in off the backside to seal the deal on the back. But we've seen it before. When you try to put Renekton into this situation where he's bad into either laner, Ash or Renekton, or sorry, Ash or Jax, he, is he going to be big enough to actually be a threat? It's probably not. Uh, we even see him picking up a call here. So this Renekton is going to be tiny for, for the majority of this game. He's basically saying that we're playing for 22 minutes. When I get my second item at 22, that's when we're going to be okay. Now, that's going to be part of the discussion. They trust. Hold on. Nice job realizing that they have enough access for the rest of this damage. But they pull out early, and Chovy survives it. They pulled out a little bit too early, not realizing how much he had in the tank there. Second cast of the Q plus the fleet footwork proc. That's gonna be that's going to be trouble. Oh, one thing that they in trust inspired for implicitly is to say when do we fight? When do we fight? 
Well, Ezreal's going to be strong on two items. We always knew that. Nunu's just going to spend as many of his resources to get the team strong as possible. So if you can get to 3, 3, 2.5 here, something u utility, and then 2 here, something like a locket or a, or a Shrelias to go along with a tank item, maybe just double tank and say we can play front to back. But those are the spikes we're going for. We're not going to try to let these guys to get level 16. All right, if they go 16, it's going to be too late. We'll be outscaled no matter what. So even though we're behind, we're still going to try to make some plays because this is our moment. Up until that moment, we're still going to be good, and that's our last moment where we have to commit everything. Renekton, however, with, with Cull, he's not going to have any point of strength. This was a very awkward last pick for them. Expanded that much, but as Azale highlighted, you look at the bottom of your screen, and the gold is going to all the right people. A 30 CS lead for Keen with a 600 gold lead. That's two kills without him even having any. Can with a gold lead over the Nunu, and crucially, Cassidin with a gold lead as well. I can't believe Cassidin survived that. Can you guys? It's kind of wild. He did put four points into his Q. All right, that's something that we don't see all the time. That is a the amount of points in Q should be directly relevant to how many people can show up in your lane. It's, it's sort of like an easy way to to measure it. There is incidental magic from here and magic from here. But the people who might show up to your lane are one, two, and three. You point one point in Q just because you have it, and you put two, three, four because of the number of people that show up in your lane. Sometimes you can just put three as a as a starting line and say, I'm playing against a mage, I want three points in my queue just so I can trade back. Got red buff on him. Yeah. I like that he extended that trade. Uh, but Kassin putting that fourth point in queue could have been the difference, right? Three points early, make sure that you have that. It's not a matter of wave clear. You're never going to out wave clear the Orianna, so he doesn't rush to put the extra points in, into the E. You just say, all right, I need the queue to survive. I need the queue to stay healthy. I can get the rest of my CS under turret. I just need to make sure that I'm not taking all that chip damage. So good adaptation there by Chovy. Perhaps that's why they didn't mind sticking this profile together as well. Because you almost want to bait this. Your team outscales. Oriana, quite frankly, should not be buying Merc Treads. I know it feels like it, right? You've got stun. You've got stun plus slow. You've got root. And you're playing versus double AP. So it feels like everything's right for buying Merc Treads. But when you look at how this team is supposed to win the game, their spike is sooner. You cannot just play for a we outscale, we outscale. Maybe it's worth it because of not getting that front that front first pick. But this team is not designed around front first pick. right? They want to play front to back team fight. They want Cassidy to get level 16. They want two, three items on Ash. They want Jax to play through side lane. Uh, so you don't necessarily need Merc Treads in this spot. You can even go Lucid Boots and say, I want to have that much better wave clear. I want the, the spells to go out and I want to have access to multiple E's in a fight and not to mention um, more teleports and more ultimates. All right, do they try to bury the Bwipo? He is, he is very low on resources. They're going to just go straight at him, right? Oh, he survives and he turns a kill. Okay, F forgive me for ever doubting you, Bwipo. A little bit over antsy. The uh, minions, the minions getting in the way, plugging the spear from the Nidalee. Nidalee not able to get into into territory. Not only that, but Nidalee went for for this, which is actually perplexing to me. I see why he's doing it because you're playing against Nunu and you're saying, "Hey, I want to chip you down. I want to chip you down." But Nunu's going to be able to heal that back up. And if you go for this source, you need to be the carry. You're saying, "I'm the carry this game." I'm going to play forward. I want my damage to go up over time. I want to be in the middle of these fights and kind of extending them. That's not necessarily what you want. You do not want to be in cougar form against these champions and maybe not even against Oriana as well. So this might be a point of weakness. And certainly right here, Rod of Ages, weaker first item, no first item. And Jax is going to be on the slowest or on the, the last first item completion in the game. So FlyQuest does have a window here. They can try to go for something. They're going to continue to play super high tempo with the Nunu. Emoting Chovy, Chovy going back saying, I'm, I'm right here with you. We want we want to queue as much Chovy hubris as possible. Main CC, no ultimate to get out. Rakan's going to try to peel, and he does. Is it? There's no way it's enough, though, right? He doesn't block that one. And he needs to flash his way out. Uh, now we have a teleport. 
All right, Ezreal and Nunu both have to come over. Quad has to reposition, and uh, you're not going to deal enough here. You do get a flash from Pace saying that, hey, Ezreal's right here. Nunu's trying to close it down. They should take the rest of this. Continue the fight. This should be a ride or die. Lehens pulls away from the rest of the team saying it's just me. Good play by him. Saying, hey, you, you can't get the rest of my team. I'm either going to get back and start rooting up your, your back line, or you just have to come and collect me. Uh, so good job by him. Good job by FlyQuest saying we can take more off of this. Renekton's staying alive longer than I, than I was giving him credit for. Both of those situations. Maybe if they hadn't gotten the first failed dive, then they would have had enough to kill him that time. Uh, but because they didn't, he got a little bit further ahead, got that extra level under his belt. He's able to survive that. Right, Kassin's enormous. First turret, plates. Lots of damage to the mid and top turrets. Kassin jumping ahead, springboarding himself. Uh, he's in a good spot. If Masu can get big enough, then maybe it's good. I, this goes against some of the, the other tenants that we talked about. I don't know that I want Masu on Ezreal in this, in this much. I'd much rather see him on something like Ziggs and... Primarily above everything, Ash. They had the opportunity to grab Ash this time, too. Right, after that Jack's first pick, we could have seen Ash, Ash drafted. Um, I don't know. Maybe they want it back. Maybe they'll try to run back a draft. But, you know, this game's not over. You're a coaching staff. You're always thinking about the what-ifs. What can we do better? We could take this draft again. Be a little bit tighter on our execution versus the Kassadin. Uh, Oriana, quad proving that he's able to take the early level level advantage and push it to its maximum against the cast, so maybe they're okay taking it. Um, the one big hoodwink was that canyon, making it look like it was a good idea to invade all of his camps. That might have been a bait. And, and if you get this back again, then that's absolutely what you want to talk to Inspired about is, hey, we have a game plan. Even if even if we see Nidalee doing X, Y, and Z. Nice move by Quad there. My right, Cass can take this fight. He's up a level. He's tremendously large. Uh, he's only going to get bigger. You see him. That's basically 40% to zero. All right, Ash is the target the rest of the game. Inspired with micro movements. Oh my gosh, gets the shield up, but Rakan's not able to pivot. They did bait the fight. This is exactly what they wanted, but they just don't get the execution. The gold is too big. Uh, I don't mind the take there. You go for that play, and the idea is let me go. I'm going to chunk you all step back, and the same thing that we do against Team Liquid, a hasty fight. See if you can bait a hasty fight. And they almost get that for themselves, but this redemption first Nunu uh, is just not going to be tanky enough to hold it, hold on to it. I'm kind of surprised that we see the redemption from the from the Nunu, not the locket. Redemption very much about being the proactive team. They expected to be ahead for longer in this game, based on everything that we see. All right, this is a long lane. There's no real access to get to anything, and Cassidy's going to get big. Keen's going to give the gold because Cassidy is the hyper carry this game. Always, always look to multiply your gold. Gold is additive. Items are multiplicative, right? So every time that you can add gold to someone, you have a chance of multiplying all of the extra gold that they have for themselves. A little bit late on the redemption. Probably could have busted it here. Maybe the call was, let's, let's see if we can lure them out. But that probably had to be Snowball plus Redemption coming out uh, in the in the middle of the area so you have that already set up for yourself. I like that they go for the play right on the shop and right before they've been marked. Right before the enemy team has had a chance to, to check for it. Ash from downtown. He'll be buying himself a little bit of space, making sure that he's not taking the maximum amount of damage from Quad, but it's not going to matter here. The size of the shield's too big. Set of some braces going off. This game is going to be a wash. Now, it's just one game. If you're Fly, you shake this off. And like we said, this game is likely, we expect it to be win, win two, win three, win four, and then just the giant come out when once FlyQuest have two wins. Don't put too much emphasis on a loss here. It's just a one loss. They still need to win three games, just like you do. It's just now a best of three. Nunu has no stats with this setup. Ash is too big. 
Um, if we do run it back, this needs to change. Hold on, we'll watch the action. They get a little bit back on the other side. No, they get two kills? Maybe it's just always Renekton diff? I don't think so. Dean is in position, but they're not going to be able to chase really here. Pick up the waves, but now we have Whipple and Oriana. Uh, we have Renekton and Oriana showing up in the big spot. Masu trying to recall in the middle of the wave means that Chovy just gets a free kill. There are two main things that I want to address here. One is that we had access to Ash for Masu. I want that 100% of the time, especially when we're on red team. And two, we can't have a Renekton into Jack's Ash. So if we get Ash, we don't need to care about it. But if it's another champion like Callista, uh, Renekton in these lane swaps, eh, and into Jax, eh. Right, we want to see something like Gragas, Poppy, into Keen, into, into Jax, and say, hey, I can belly bop you. I can stop you from leap striking. I can control you. We're playing through quad, right? This is our win condition. We're, we're happy to play counter picks against Keen and just say, hey, put all of our resources, our actual in-game resources into, into the mid laner. All right, there's the ultimate. A little bit mistimed. Could have gotten both procs off on it. Good dodges right there. They get one. Ezreal ult. That's fine. He'll be up shortly. Baron, Baron is up. You do get one kill for yourself. It is on the Jax. This was a Triforce plus Boots Jax. He's going to have a significant amount of gold in the shop. See him picking up the tunnel arm. Steric's gauge, two items. Are we at our magic spot here? Nope, not quite. Almost. Strongest spike that they will have this game is going to be 2, 2, 1.5, 1.5. Right, this is the item set that you want for your team. That's when you're going to be relatively strongest in this game. Expect them to play super hard. Right, this is going to finish. You're going to get the Lucid Boots done on the Ezreal. Uh, we're going to have the Boots done on Renekton. Probably Merc Treads from him because he has to play into the front. He's got the Sterics Gauge. He's got the Black Cleaver. Black Cleaver to help out the damage from Ezreal. There's a lot of resources to put into Ezreal's front-to-back damage. I don't know if it's going to be enough. You also don't have much to shred with this Black Cleaver. Two days remain until the end of days for FlyQuest in this second game if it's already all right let's look at position six wards down on this side of the map lucio starting to reposition them onto the baron half uh, but you see that this is where they're claiming to be strong they they say hey we absolutely need to win for the next dragon fight right these were invested for that dragon saying we want to have a superior position we've got two to one the dragons if there's any way to win it's honestly this is not going to be enough because even if you get soul by the time you get to elder you're going to be talking about a level 18 cast and level 18 jacks to expect from Paige. This guy has leveled up time and time again. He is such an impressive player. FlyQuest looking for a potential spike. Genji holding this territory. They've got two wards down for themselves. You can see that with their lead, they're saying we're willing to take this much of the map. All right, 60% of the map is more than enough to go and take your win, Snowball. The rest of the position. Uh, Whippo missing a chance to get his W buffered here. Kassadin wasting some of his damage into the Steric Shield. That is Steric Shield down. It's now down for the for the ensuing fight. Renekton's going to try to keep his teleports up, as is Orianna. Celestial opposition keeping Busio alive. I love this Abyssal Mask, guys. Abyssal Mask is fantastic. But this is the thing. I, mu I would have much rather swap these two items. Get the Abyssal Mask on the Nunu and the Redemption on the on the Rakan. We'd, we would be in, I would say, strictly better position if that were the case. It's kind of dicey. Maybe Rakan just doesn't have enough HP. Inspired, willing to turn. Can you bait them into a hasty fight? It's not really going to happen here against the Kassadin. Hold on, big shield. Oriana front to back. This is why I want the Abyssal Mask on the Nunu, by the way, because you want extra stats on the guy who's holding holding the ball. But that's going to be game. Uh, a lot of things to adjust. The team comp is not without strengths. I like it. I love the Nunu plan. Nunu needs to be able to get through mid, all right? We need to get Ash right here. Renekton, this pick won't matter if if we don't have to deal with Ash and Renekton. Kill this. You have to kill this. Get out of range. Make sure he dies. Good job. Um, and then I want to I swap these. These items. If we do that, I think FlyQuest has a chance with a draft like this to win the game. I want them to keep on taking red team. Uh, the game plan should still be to outscale slightly 
take this team that knows that they want to play for outscale, say I want to outscale you a little bit more than you want to outscale us. We don't mind the cast and pick, but we have to get in its face. Right? Another reason why the Nunu could have gone for the Abyssal Mask. I see, I see the benefits of wanting Redemption because it makes you for constant pressure in all lanes. So maybe maybe this was the game that says, hey, look, we are also willing to play around Masu. But I think this is the game that Genji will know for sure. Hey, we don't actually care if you play around Masu. We only care if you play around Quid. Um, this, especially with a Nunu that needs to front for amount, any amount of damage, Nunu becomes that much stronger with the Ori shield. Ori's AP, big shield. If you put defensive stats on the Nunu, then it'll be able to to go. Masu looking a little bit a little bit distraught here. It does say my bad. Not an important thing. Not an important sentiment to get across. Again, because it doesn't matter what already happened. It's a good token for your team. Show you, hey, I can take accountability. I can do a little bit better. Um, but not a sentiment that you want to spend any amount of time harboring on. I mean, it's the exact opposite story of game one. Now that we're two games into this series, and this one is essentially done, except for walking it to the Nexus for Gen G. Both All right, so we'll take a look at Gen G's technique. You can see them fighting for everything. They say, we're much stronger than you, so we're going to take these lines of scrimmage. We're going to take 80% of the map and just whittle away all your resources. All the tier twos are done. Next one on, on the map is the top tier two. We can whittle that down. And, and basically any fight that you bring to us, we can take. So if that's the attitude and FlyQuest knows, then I like what they have, shallow wards. You want to try to get some sort of hidden ward in a spot that might not get spotted for a teleport and say if you can get a Renekton flank. Renekton does have teleport. This could be a window for it right now. Jax is going to feel committed to this bot wave. You could potentially sacrifice an inhib in the bot lane to try to win a 5v3. If they go for a 1v1-3-1 one one split, you might be okay with that if you know that you can get the, the fight. The problem is there's no control wards. Right, normal you, or no wards. Period. Normally, in this situation, you want to anticipate where the enemy team is going to try to be strong, and you drop a ward in that you see them move past, and you say, "All right, that's my spot. I mark that ward. That's my angle. I'm gonna let them one three one, and I'm gonna try to smoke and mirrors as much as possible. Make it show like we're here. Hey, show like we're defending. Two people teleport to the same ward, and then go and consolidate the fight on the three stack. Um, hope." hope that you can just catch someone off balance that they that they position poorly if they play optimally they're never going to give you the win there's there is no way past this, this situation against optimal play but hey pressure situations make them play the game genji taking no nonsense though pays is incredibly accurate with his clicks this game you saw him kiting and zoning the Renekton, responding to every movement from from Renekton and making sure they got the maximum damage out. Uh, you have to be careful about this Ash pick. Ash is one of the most, if not the most, influential pick in the entire tournament. I expect them to try to go for it first.